so the worker does all the work. Okay. But what the, I would say was the exciting aspect of that period is all over the place. People were beginning to stand up and say, hey, we want some control over our lives. Yes? Did you say that, okay, when you're talking about the media shifting its attention from the Avon and Quam to Vietnam, that one of the reasons primarily that the shift was into Vietnam also was like in association with Kennedy's assassination? I mean, was that a direct reason, would you think, to why we got more particularly involved in, in Vietnam was Kennedy's assassination too? or? I mean, as, as Rick, I am not a historian. I don't really know the answer to that. Um, what I think is, I mean, it's not really. The issue of Vietnam is very similar to the issue of Nicaragua. And if you follow what goes on in Nicaragua, so they, remember those black words of the domino theory. And what there was was a feeling which exists today. I mean, I mean you don't have to worry about reading the 60s. Just watch President Reagan on the television. You're seeing a rerun of the same, same thing. There is an assumption that the United States has the right to control a certain section of the world. And if poor people, often living under oppression, rise up to demand dignity in their lives, to make a revolution, if you like, which is, of course, how this country was founded, that by definition, those people are communists, and they're anti-American, and we must be opposed to them. Okay? The fear in Nicaragua is that if the Nicaraguan government is able to provide wealth for its people, there will be other revolutions in Guatemala and so among starving and hungry people. And what America's role is supposed to be is to put down those revolutions and to protect people like Ferdinand Marcos because they're anti-communist. Or Papa Doc Duvalier, whose country was starving to death while well, he ripped it off to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. But that's okay. That's okay. They're anti-communists. Somoza was a fine man. He was an anti-communist. And in 1973, overthrew Salvador Allende because he was a socialist. And now we have a fascist government there that's killed 30,000 people. That's okay. They're anti-communist. But really, the truth of the matter is, to be honest with you, it hasn't changed. The reason, the reason I think, basically, uh, that uh, the United States was in Vietnam, uh, the reason that the United States supported Chiang Kai-shek in China for many years, <laughs> is that you have, as Rick was indicating, we, have, we live under a capitalist system, which is dominated by very wealthy and powerful corporations, who see the underdeveloped world and the third world as a source of, of raw materials and as a source of, of cheap labor. And it's important that those people stay poor and stay dominated by wealthy forces. And if Vietnam overthrew its ruling class, this idea could spread. And it's exactly the same phenomenon as going on in Nicaragua. It really hasn't changed, and it's really not very complicated. You go through your history books, and you find out. I mean, I don't have to. That's, that's for another subject. But, you know, you go through the United States has been involved in dozens of countries in Latin America. Constantly, the Marines are down there as soon as the people begin to rise up and demand a better life country after country. And the countries remain poor, starvation exists, but so long as the government remains quote unquote anti-communist, they're a friend of the United States. So I don't think Kennedy's assassination had too much to do with it. Yeah. Um, do you think a large part of Reagan's appeal is um, his willingness to make the decisions for us that we wanted to make for ourselves in the 60s? Well, that's a tough question, and I, and I don't know. What you're asking is, we went through a period in the 60s, and, and how do we end up? How do we end up today? And what is Reagan's appeal? And you know, it's, it's a tough question. I really don't know the answer. Um, I think one thing that I can say, I think with some certainty, is that while all of this movement was taking place, while kids, in a sense, were rebelling against their parents, it was a very frightening experience. People were losing control over their own kids, and you would have people clung for something that was traditional and conservative, okay? You know, it's when, when all kinds of crazy things are going on, you want something that you can hang your hat on, okay? And Reagan is certainly giving the people of America something, you know, it's, it's the same line that has existed for 100 years. You know, America is, we believe in freedom, we believe in God, the rest of the world is not really uh, where it's at, and we have the right to do this. It's pretty simplistic stuff. Uh, and, I, and I think there's, there's, there's some of that appeal. Um, but I think the phenomenon of Reaganism would be maybe too long for now. Maybe at the end of the course. I, I have a, a sort of comment about that question, which is there's another level of analysis that you could look at it at it from. Um, and and that would be a more a more economic level of analysis. Okay, America came out 
of the Depression <coughs> into a Second World War and fueled its economy on a war economy, and built its, constructed itself back up to a level where it, where it functioned very well. And we, people got 